Welcome to this getting started video for dive chemistry. I'd like to take the next several minutes to help you get used to using dive chemistry and how to do a lesson and some of the other important components of the course. Once you get started, things are very consistent and the format is very repeatable from week to week. Watching this getting started, it'll really help you get up to speed faster and answer a lot of questions for you. First up, make sure you have access to the assignment chart and you can go to diveintomath.com science teachers guide, that's what TG stands for. Access that teacher's guide, add it to your bookmarks bar on your browser. Your browser is like your Google Chrome or Firefox, whatever you're using to access the internet, that's your browser. Here's a view of that assignment chart. This is the one for biology and we can just scroll through there and this is the most important thing here, your weekly instructions and you can see there there's a definitions, flashcards, internet textbook links there and so important links there for flashcards which is your vocabulary, internet textbook and any animations or videos you might have as well with that course and so all 32 weeks it's a 32 week course you can see that things are set up week by week and all of that is in your assignment chart found in your teacher's guide so make sure you have that bookmarked in your browser now let's talk about completing a lesson and in dive science a lesson that consists of your definitions your reading assignment your video lecture and your review questions. You have two ways to access and study your definitions. One is digital flashcards, which is what we recommend. So the purpose of the definitions is just to get familiar with new words and meanings. And so you start simple with definitions and get some fundamentals. A lot of words in science can be kind of big and scary and you never heard of them before. So we just start simple then and familiarize ourselves with some new words and their meanings. And then you want to review those three to four days per week. Let's take a look at how to access those digital flashcards using your assignment chart. And here's the integrated chemistry and physics assignment chart there in the top left column we'll just start with week one lesson one and we'll click on that and that opens up in a program called Quizlet now what you want to do to start with if it doesn't open up with both sides then you can go to options and answer with select that and go to both and then exit out of that so you can see the definition there the term itself and then the text definition below that, a collection of facts and so on. So you look at that one and then you skip to the next one and so on. You just read that term and then the definition. After you've looked through them this way a time or two, you can go back to options and pick one of these, either one. If you want the term to appear first, then you can do it that way. If you want the definition to appear first, you can do it that way and then you click on the card to flip it so inductive reasoning it's about finding rules you flip it and you see the definition come up then you just hit the arrow to go to the next one term shows up click on that flashcard to flip it go to the next one click on it to flip it and so on and so you just go through those working to memorize. The goal is to memorize them, of course, and so you work on these several times a week. If you prefer to handwrite your definitions, there is a PDF glossary that's available for that. Once you've studied your definitions for a few minutes, you want to move on to the reading assignment. We've created an internet textbook which has internet links, and that's what we recommend for your reading. You may also wish to use a physical textbook and we have links to different textbooks that you can use that match up well with the dive course and with its weekly format of topics. And here's the integrated chemistry and physics assignment chart and notice that column titled textbook reading. You can go to the teacher's guide, find your physical textbook you want to use and then fill out the page numbers in your assignment chart. So, Keep in mind the flow of a lesson. 
you did your definitions, you're going to do your reading now, and that's going to help you get familiar with the concept. You did your definitions to kind of get familiar with words used in the concept you're studying this week. Then you'll watch a lecture for even more detailed information, and then you'll do your homework. And we do mean that read to get familiar. You don't need to try to understand everything in your reading. And that's a misstep that lots of students and parents make is they spend too much time on the reading getting stuck on a concept instead of watching that as it plays out in the video lecture, especially more difficult to understand concepts. Read to get familiar. Watch the video lecture after that for the more challenging concepts. If there are any animations and videos, especially in dye biology, watch those as well. Here's the dye biology assignment chart. Let's again just look at that week one and under internet textbook reading assignment, we can just click on what is science right there. And that will open up and typically in a new window. And you can just read through that. And depending on the topic, you'll want to spend 20 to 40 minutes on your reading. And Finally, whatever course you're doing with dive science, it's important to understand that reading supplements the dive video lectures. It doesn't take the place of them. This is not the most important part of your lesson. The video lecture is the most important part. Watch the video lecture to understand those more challenging concepts when those appear Next up is the video lecture, and when you do your video lecture, a big part of that is taking notes. So be patient. Develop this skill over time. This is a college preparatory skill, and if you didn't know it, Dive Science is designed to be a college preparatory course. So be patient. Develop this skill over time before you get to college. So as an example, here's a video lecture from biology, and it's on genetics. And things you want to write down are like that title, and then subtitles like Punnett squares. And you can see how you can easily fast forward and then rewind, go back as you need to. So things like titles and subtitles, key ideas, and Punnett squares, they aren't the easiest thing to understand. They're one of those things that's better to understand while you're watching a lecture. And so you want to listen to that explanation. And then if you need to, just pause, rewind. Here's an example from chemistry. And so here's something where you wouldn't want to write every single word that you see on the screen down, but you take short notes, abbreviate things. And then later on, some example problems come up. And so you can do those calculations to solve that problem, pause and rewind as you need to. And there's a place where there's not that much to write for that particular problem. But you might want to add some key ideas, problem solving tips to help you solve that particular problem. All example problems like that, especially math related ones, you definitely want to do those and show your work and pause and rewind and then try to solve it on your own and not just write down what I have and copy what I'm writing. That's really not learning. What you want to do is pause it and try to solve it yourself. Now, your lecture window won't look exactly like this one, but it'll be similar where you can play, pause, rewind easily, fast forward as you need to as well. So any diagrams, tables that appear, you'll want to sketch those out or, or draw those out as well. Brief notes explaining those. And most important, take advantage of doing this self-paced. And instead of having a live classroom where you have a time constraint as to how long the lecture is, pause it. Rewind until you understand a concept. The last part of completing a lesson are the review questions and find your workbook, find whatever lesson you're doing and the review questions worksheet that is related to that lesson that you're working on. You don't need a separate piece of paper for this. There's plenty of room in that worksheet to answer your questions. Make sure you printed that workbook out or purchased a copy of it pre-printed. So the review questions, they are based on the video lectures and the vocabulary. Review both of those as you need to. You can have those available and open. It's not like a closed 
exam or something. So make sure you don't think of this as a quiz or an exam or anything like that. It's practice. Of course, you want to do good on it, right? But you don't want to get stressed out and, and make too big a deal about it, about being stuck on an individual problem for more than 10 minutes. If you don't get it, move on, watch the solutions. So complete it, then grade it by watching those video solutions at the end of the dive video lecture. So for this example here, this is lesson two. So video lecture two at the end of that are the solutions to these review questions. And so there is some integrity there expected of you to be mature and honest. And when you're done with that video lecture, you pause it when you get to those video solutions and you don't move past that and you go complete your review questions. And then you grade and correct with those video solutions. And as you move through, if especially on a math related problem, you might want to study that video solution, pause it, then go try to solve that problem again on your own. And if you see any missing information, like, oh, I didn't realize that was something we we're supposed to know, it was covered either in the definitions or the video lecture. So go back and add any missing information to your notes. So be thorough. Review as you need to. Add those things to your notes. And one reason for that is this important comment here that quarterly exams, they are based off the review questions. The review questions are based primarily off your lecture. So if you've taken good lecture notes, you've filled things in where you need to that maybe you didn't have before you completed the review questions, you've got therefore a good set of notes, you understood all of the review questions, it's much more likely you do well on the quarterly exam. Now, usually the last thing you do in a week of dive science is to complete the video lab. And so you want to watch that lab and complete it in your workbook. And so like you see over there to the right, there's laboratory activities and your workbook, there'll be sufficient room to complete that activity so you can do the video labs with or without the lab kit. If you do use the lab kit, use the instructions and materials list. Those are found in your assignment chart. For example, take a look at this biology assignment chart and we can just see under video lab there, there's the lab kit instructions. If you are doing it hand on, you can just click on that and that'll open into Dive Biology lab instructions. And so you just open that lab instructions up and you can scroll through there and see the list of materials and lab by lab, what materials are supplied in the lab kit, what materials you need to provide. The videos work just like the lecture videos. You'll see the workbook pages appear, which will help you kind of know if you're in the right place or not. There's times also during the lab activity that you'll want to write things off of the screen or identify things and record them. And sometimes you're asked to make measurements off of a ruler or maybe off a graph or, or maybe like here, just writing down a name for that color that you see of that light. A great thing about a video lab like this, if you're doing this hands-on compared to like a just a regular book with a list of instructions in it is that you actually get to see what the lab looks like and that really helps you do it successfully. Just like cooking, it's it's kind of like cooking. You have a set of instructions with like a recipe and so like here, that's really important to see how to put your stick with the chemical on it into the burner flame there so that you don't burn the stick and things like that. So there's good explanation. You, it makes the lab safer too. So a screenshot like this with an audio explanation behind it, that really will help ensure that you do this correctly. And of course, you can always rewind anytime you need to, to see what you're supposed to do and refresh your memory or whatever. There's something you missed and then you can move on. So complete that activity, make your recordings in your lab manual when asked to. And we recommend a completion grade. So when you finish, give a completion grade for that activity. Correct mistakes. Now labs, sometimes they can get time consuming. You're trying to do this experiment for the first time and follow a set of instructions that can be time consuming. We recommend a two hour time limit at the end of that time, whatever has been completed, 
then do a completion grade based off of that. The labs are very thorough. They're college preparatory. Most of them follow the scientific method, so you're getting a great feel for how the scientific method works. And even if you just do the video lab and don't do any of the hands-on materials, that's still going to give you an excellent college preparatory lab education. As will just doing two hours worth of lab every week for all of our dive courses, you will get a good lab experience that way. Now, in one week, even in one lesson, there is a lot to do in a dive science course. And so we want you to consider just using this timed method instead of thinking you have to get an entire lesson done in one sitting or even an entire video lab activity in one sitting. So our recommendation is to work on science four to five days per week and then do that for a maximum of two hours per day, one hour to two hours, depending on the student. Integrated chemistry and physics, which we recommend as our first high school science course, that just doesn't have as much content to it, so it doesn't take as long. So more like an hour a day on that. Chemistry, a more mature student would be taking that, someone who can sit for a little bit longer time and, and work on something and stay focused, so two hours max per day on that. Using a time method like this helped me when I was in college engineering and I was in the Aerospace Engineering Honor Society and I would try to stay organized, set up a good weekly schedule and set time aside work on a homework set and when I got tired I would stop and then I'd pick it up the next day and uh, amazingly a lot of times a problem maybe I was stuck on the day before it would come right to me the next day when I started again so that time method just from my own experience it really is beneficial so stop continue where you left off the next day now, approximately every eight weeks, you're going to have a quarterly exam that is over all of the information you covered that quarter. And these are college-style exams, so you'll need to study all week. So these are printable exams, like the one over to the right there. So you print those and complete them on that printout. One of the best ways to study is to retake the review questions for that quarter. Now, chemistry, it has a cumulative final for the fourth quarter exam, so that'll be over everything. But all other exams, that's going to be your number one way to study, is to retake those review questions. And you just do them again. Review your notes as well. And as you retake the review questions, if there are things missing in your notes, then you can fill those in. Now, you also want to review your definitions. And on the assignment charts, you can find that there will be like for exam one here for biology, there's a whole Quizlet set that is all of the definitions for that quarter. They're all there in one place. The most important thing to do though is do those review questions and in particular make sure you know any definitions that are included in those because the quarterly exam is based off of the review questions. And remember the review questions are based primarily off of your lectures. Now in the teacher's guide and the assignment chart we have descriptions of what we refer to as a standard course versus an honors course and so a standard course it's okay to use notes or a review sheet on the exam and what a review sheet is is one piece of paper front and back the student writes all the information they need for the exam on there so any definitions that they're particularly having trouble with and they've seen them on the review questions any problems, especially math problems that you might be having trouble with, put those on the review sheet and the formula or formulas that are used along with that and maybe even an example problem to help you remember how to use that formula. So with that standard course, it is okay to use your notes or a review sheet. For the honors course, we recommend a one-page review sheet only. And so that's in addition to these rules that you see over here. So make that review sheet, depending on the student, allow approximately two hours per day for four days, so about eight hours total, to prepare for an honors level exam. 
Sometimes it takes repeating a set of review questions two or three times before you truly understand an idea and are ready to take the exam. But when you believe you're ready, then go ahead and take the exam and there is a one hour time limit on that. Grade it, correct it, then repeat it. So if you go through that grading and correcting process and use the solutions that are provided, then really truly try to correct mistakes, solve problems over again. You know, you study the solution and then you close that solution up and solve that problem. Then go take it again. You should get a hundred the next time. And so you average that with your first attempt and that's going to be like getting bonus points on top of that first attempt. Well, we've talked about every gradable thing now in dive science and so let's talk about the grade calculator to calculate your overall average and there's a grade calculator spreadsheet in your CD or download version whichever you have so there's different ways to open that up Microsoft Excel Apple numbers Google Sheets like it is right here and this is a example of the dive biology spreadsheet right here but what you want to do is just you go by assignment number and so remember how we talked about a lesson what all that consists of that's your notes and definitions and that's a completion grade on that did you complete all of that and so normally you did and so you get a hundred on that for a completion grade. it's like a quality grade and then your review questions you got nine out of ten right so you got a ninety on it so facts quizzes if there was one then hopefully you got a hundred on that too you did that well and then a lab activity and another cl completion grade let's say you didn't quite get all of it done so you got an 85 now just scrolling over here a bit notice there's this overall grade and it says division by zero in there and it's not going to put a score in there until you complete that first quarterly exam. And so remember how you can take your exams twice. You record the first grade, you take it again, record that second grade, average those two. Let's say you got a 92 on that first quarterly exam. Now it's going to put an overall grade in because you have something in each of these cells where you're required to have at least one input to that. So. Of course, normally what you'll do is you'll get all of those assignments done for that quarter and any facts, quizzes, lab scores, all of that, then that first quarterly exam, and then it's going to calculate your overall average. And just so you can see, you can see how it changes that overall grade every time something else changes now. So, so you got a 95 on your second lab, enter that, now your overall grade went up. So there are some instructions over here too, and there's some instructions. There's a grade scale over here as well. So all of the spreadsheets, whichever course you're using, they're all going to have a similar form to this one here. Chemistry ICP won't have the facts quiz column in there to enter grades to. And there's more information in the teacher's guide on how the grades are calculated and what weights are given to each part of your overall grade. Now, if you're in dive biology or dive chemistry, you might want to consider taking a CLEP or an AP exam and getting college credit, up to eight hours college credit for that coursework. And if you do that, we recommend using our internet textbook for that. It's just a little more thorough. We also recommend using our e-learning course because it is more updated. We can keep that more updated with the latest advances in science much more so than the the CD or the download versions and a few differences between the CLEP and the AP the CLEP exam you can take that anytime you just go to a local community college and sign up for that and the AP exam though that is only given in May and the AP exam is more rigorous so it's more likely to be accepted in a science or engineering school at a university. So the CLEP, if science isn't your major, then you might consider taking the CLEP if you don't think you'll have a science or an engineering major. Either exam, we recommend using our CLEP professor course 
to prepare for and take that exam. And you can find out more about that on our website there at diveintomath.com. And those CLEP professor courses, they have more instruction, they have practice problems, they have full length practice exams that you can take as well and get really prepared spending several weeks prior to your actual exam using that CLEP professor course to get ready. Okay, well that's all for this Getting Started. Thanks for listening. God bless and I hope you have a great year.